Coming up on Inside Walford Football, the Carriers travel to the Low Country in search of their second SoCon win of the season and their 11th straight victory over the Citadel. Inside Wofford Football, presented by Wild Wing Cafe, Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine, Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, the AT&T Real Yellow Pages, and by Papa John's. The Terriers fall behind 3-0 midway through the first quarter, but they respond with 17 straight points to take a 14-point lead midway through the second quarter. And in the second half, they come up with three touchdowns of 13 yards or more on their way to their most complete effort of the season and a convincing 43-17 win over the Citadel. Hello and welcome to Inside Wofford Football, everyone. Each week, Coach Ayers talks about needing to execute in all three phases of the game. And Saturday afternoon, the Terriers executed on offense, defense, and special teams and ended up coming away with a second SOCON victory of the season. With just over three minutes to play in the first quarter, Mitch Allen runs it in from five yards out to give Walford a 7-3 to three lead after one. Then early in the second quarter, Christian Reed boots the 39-yard field goal to extend the lead to 10-3. to three. And midway through the second, Mike Rucker also scores on a five-yard run to give Walford a 17-3 to three advantage. After a Bulldogs touchdown cuts the lead to seven, Walford answers with a safety and a field goal just before the half to lead 22 to 10 at the break. Early in the third, Mitch Allen throws a strike to Brenton Burson for a 13-yard touchdown while Stev DeVette adds a 25-yard TD run late in the third and Michael Scott chips in for the 16-yard scoring run in the fourth as Walford continues its recent dominance of the Citadel with a 43-17 victory. When we come back on Inside Walford Football, we'll take a look at the first half highlights as the Terriers get the momentum back late in the half with a big play on defense. Stay with us, everyone. News Channel 7, Hardy's Spartanburg Regional and Food Line, caring for the Carolinas. At nearly 90 years of age, most people are ready to slow down. Fannie Ruth Hyatt is not one of those people. Fannie is always looking to help a person in need. A selfless community cornerstone with an overwhelming love for the people. If you know a worthy recipient of our award, send us a letter to 250 International Drive, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29303, or email us at WSPA.com. Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. It doesn't take long for Mike Ayer's crew to show the Bulldogs, despite a down season in Terrier Town, some things never change. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser and Tom Hinson on the call. Blanchard shotgun snap coming with a single back. He'll throw to the near side. A flat pass caught at the 40, 45. First down out of bounds at the 50. He's a left-footed kicker. Snap a little low. Kick on the way has the distance and it's good and the Bulldogs have the initial lead. Bulldogs three, Wofford nothing. One man Joslin to the right. Allen running the option left, now setting up to throw, puts it downfield, and it's caught at the 40, taken ahead to the 35-yard line. Devin Reed, left hash, back to the wing bone, right up the middle, Scott, big hole, 30, 25, Michael Scott to the 20, lowers the boom down to the 16. Wofford down three to nothing. Fake of the dive to Scott. Allen running the option left, turns it upfield to the 15, to the 10, to the 9. Second and goal from the 5. Allen again out of the gun with two backs. Fakes the give to Scott, cuts it upfield, going right. Touchdown, untouched into the end zone. Got a kick out block from Rucker and the Terriers, who did not score a touchdown last week, are on the board. 3.23 to play first quarter here from Johnson Haygood Stadium. 
Wofford seven, the Citadel three. Third and six Bulldogs from their 34 left hash. Two receivers right, one to the left for Blanchard. Fumbles as he's hit in the pocket. The ball is loose at the 33, and Wofford has come out of there with the football. Keaton Thompson was the guy who jarred it loose. I think they're going to give the recovery to Allen Smith. He was the guy that popped on it. Allen out of the gun, play action to throw. Rolling to the near side, puts it up for Joslin, and a sliding catch is made at the Bulldog 18-yard line. Citadel with 10 on the line of scrimmage. Snap there, spot down. Reed's kick has the distance, and it is good. Christian Reed with a 39-yard field goal. 13-39 to play in the first half. Wofford 10, the Citadel 3. Quick snap, Allen running the option right. There's a seam, 45. He'll run out of bounds at the Bulldog 42. Two receivers left, burst into the outside, a single back out of the gun, handoff Rucker, slanting right. Tries to juke a man at the 35. Allen takes the snap, handoff Rucker up the gut, and he'll get in. Touchdown, Terriers. Big touchdown for the Terriers and a way to capitalize after your defense got a nice three and out. 7.58 remaining, second quarter here from Charleston. Terriers now lead the Bulldogs 17 to three. Wide outs either side, give to the deep man Jones, big hole up the middle, 15, 10, down to the seven. Blanchard back to pass, down the middle with it caught. Touchdown, tight end Alex Sellers. 1.44 to play in the second quarter. Wofford 17, the Citadel 10. Three receivers right, one to the left. Again, he'll roll right. Now he's going to step up in the pocket. High pass, fingertip catch made. But Johnson Richardson is tackled after just a five-yard reception. It remains Bart Blanchard. Shotgun snap at the goal line. Here comes the rush. Gary Blunt hits him in the end zone. It's recovered by a bulldog on the ground, and that'll go as a safety. Give Gary Blunt credit. Came off the corner untouched, hit Blanchard, he fumbled the ball, and then a Bulldog dives on it. That is a safety and two points for Wofford. And now the Terriers are going to get an extra two points and the football. 56 seconds to play in the half. Wofford 19, the Citadel 10. The punt away from Cass Cooey from the 20, taken far hash at the 23 by Rutgers. Got room 30. Far sideline 40, 50, 40, out of bounds at the Citadel. 39-yard line, a heck of a return on the free kick. DeVette in a quarterback, second and six from the Bulldog, 36. Again, a shotgun snap, play action for Stev. Throws, caught at the near numbers by Burson, slants toward the center of the field to the 25 to the 20. 32-yard attempt possibly coming. Cummings with the snap, spot down, kick on the way, has the distance, and he got it. Christian Reed with his second field goal of the day, a 32-yarder, near halftime score. As the Terriers leading it, Wofford 22, the Citadel 10. Coming up, we'll take a look at a guy that holds a unique distinction on this Terrier football team. We'll tell you what it is, coming up. Terrier fans, here's your chance to win a pair of tickets to an upcoming athletic event. Be the first caller to 597-4110. Leave your name and phone number in the message, and you could be a winner. Compliment of the South Carolina Education Lottery. Papa John wants everybody to know why our pizza's better. Better ingredients, better pizza is not a slogan. It is a way of life. So he's bringing it right to him. Papa's in the house. Introducing Papa John's new Cinepie. Our fresh dough loaded with sweet cinnamon topping. Get one free when you buy a large two-topping pizza, just $11.99. What do you think of the fresh dough Cinepie? A Cinepie free. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John. They pick up their games, pick up their teams, and pick up the pace. Enterprise salutes NCAA student-athletes for picking us all up. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. There's no question the state of California produces an awful lot of college football players. However, with that said, the Terriers don't get a whole lot of guys out of the Golden State, but there are a few exceptions. Let's take a closer look at senior linebacker Cody Vanderlinden and our Terrier in the Spotlight presented by Papa John's. Currently, Walford has about 100 players on its roster and exactly one guy 
calls the West Coast home. Carlsbad, California's Cody Vanderlinden. And four years ago, when looking for a place to play college football, a coach from a small school in South Carolina gave him a call. Coach Chichi called me one day and he just said, I'm from Wofford. Wasn't really sure what Wofford was, but uh, gave it a chance, told me they wanted me to fly out here, kind of check out the school, see if I liked it. And I did, and I, I liked it. Last year, late in the game versus Elon, Cody recovered a fumble. And then it is recovered by Cody Vanderlinden. And finished with four tackles on the year. And this season, he's added a few more tackles to get to about a dozen in his career. Well, had to be patient when it comes to playing time. He's now moved back from defensive end to the position he's more comfortable with at linebacker. A lot of guys have to wait their turn, but you really had to kind of wait your turn to get in there and fly. Yeah, I was kind of moving around positions. Like the last few years, I played some DN last year, and I played some DN my sophomore year too. And then last year, I was kind of back and forth. So uh, it's been kind of changing positions. And then this year, I'm back at linebacker for good and been trying, been rotating in there. And it's been nice, it's been fun. He says when he first made the move across the country, it took him a little while to get used to life away from home. But since, he has made a lot of good friends and wouldn't trade the relationships he's made or the wins for anything. Coming from San Diego to South Carolina, quite different. I was kind of getting used to as I moved on. I've gotten close to some people and ready to graduate here, and I've, I'm glad I came. And after graduation, Cody says he's probably going to move back west and try to go to grad school and get his master's in business administration. Go! Hi, I'm Mackenzie DeGraff, and I'm a freshman from Brewer, Maine, and you're watching Inside Wofford Football. Go Terriers! Coming up, we'll take a look at the second half highlights as the Terriers keep the hammer down with a trio of touchdowns. Stay with us, everyone. Welcome back to Inside Wofford Football. With a 12-point lead and 30 minutes to play, the Terriers know that they cannot let up versus the Bulldog squad that will never give up. Let's take a look at the second half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser and Tom Henson on the call. Mitch Allen at the controls out of the gun with two backs. Handoff right up the gut and popping through the line is Scott, 35-40. He's out to the 50, Scott to the 45, down to the Bulldog, 41. Man in motion left behind the formation is Reed. Fake of the dive, and Allen's going to run left on the option. Second and five from the Bulldog, 13. Shotgun for Allen, two backs, rolling right, throws toward the end zone. Caught, touchdown, Brenton Burson. Two-handed catch up over his head. Well thrown ball by Mitch Allen and a nice job of Brenton Burson going up and grabbing that ball and uh, coming down with two feet in the end zone. 11.57 to play third quarter. Terriers with their best lead of the ball game. Wofford 29, Bulldogs 10. He'll take the snap from Thomas Suggs. Terriers bring four. Here's the pressure. Pocket breaks down. He will be sacked. Lights turned out back at the 39 by Eric Eberhard, his first sack of the year. In motion left, one receiver behind the formation, two backs. DeVette running the option left after faking the dive. There's the seam 20. Far sideline 30, has a blocker at the 40, cuts it inside at the 50 to the Bulldog 45 to the 40. Steve DeVette down to the Bulldog 38-yard line. In motion near side, Rucker handoff up the gut to Parks, and he has good yards. Keeps his feet to the 25, to the 20, turns it down to the 19. The quarterback, Allen, up under center, fakes the dive, pitch left on the option, and Rucker drops the pitch, loose on the ground at the 25, picked up 
by one of the Bulldogs. And they're going to call it a dead ball at the 27-yard line. Now, the Citadel, I believe, is going to get the football, but the officials blew the whistle as one of the Bulldogs scooped it up. Second and 10 Bulldogs from the 36. Ford handoff, and it is fumbled. Ball loose at the 33. The Terriers say they have it. I believe it's Wofford football. It is. Jonathan Sharp has come out of there with the ball. Two men in motion on the snap, no flags. Pitch to Rucker near corner on the option. Good yards on first and 10. Citadel 4-3 defense. Quarterback draw. Devet straight ahead, 45. Cuts left to the 50. Wing to the right is Gaston. Devet shotgun snap, throws to the far side. Joslin has it. The Citadel now stacking the line. Lees in motion left. Allen running the option right. All sorts of room, 20. 10, headed for the pylon at the five. Touchdown. Pardon me, that was Stev DeVette. They switch quarterbacks again. Stev DeVette running for 25 yards and a score. 37 seconds to play in the third quarter. Wofford 36, the Citadel 10. Two receivers left, one coming to the right. It's Robert, short side, first and 10 from the 44. Again, Edwards throwing a deep route for nobody, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 13-yard line, returned ahead to the 20, looking to make the left corner, tackled. Kendall Bratcher at the 25, Bratcher with the pick. First and 10, Wofford from their 24, and DeVette will throw it down the middle, caught on a slant pattern over the middle by Burson. Burson down to the Bulldog, 47-yard line. Shotgun snap, and DeVette fakes the dive, runs the option right. There's the toss away to Scott, far side. He's to the 45, to the 40. Man in motion, near side, Palmer behind the formation. Hand off. No, it's a fake of the dive, and DeVette's going to run to the far side, slanting right to the 30. Out of the gun again, DeVette. The Citadel coming with a full house blitz. Ball thrown to the far side, caught at the sideline, and out of bounds goes Joslin. Back to the wing bone, in motion right, Lees. Hand off up the gut to the fullback, Michael Scott. Breaks two tackles to the 10-5, stumbles into the end zone. That is a touchdown. That's just a lot of arm tackling by Citadel Bulldogs. 10 minutes and 19 seconds to play, fourth quarter. Wofford has more than blown it open. Terriers 43, the Citadel 10. Terriers with their second line in on offensive front. Miles, Paget for Nattle as White's going to run the option near side, forward pitch, and that is taken by Austin Palmer. Second and goal, Starks takes the shotgun snap, quarterback looking to run, bumps into his own lineman, wants to take it to the right corner, now he's going to throw, he's got a man open, touchdown back in the end zone, caught by Cam Turner. And this game belongs to the visitors, and 43-17, to Wofford has beaten the Bulldogs. A bunch of them thought the dog was dead. But we came down here, we did what we were supposed to do, what we're capable of doing. We have the ability to be what we want to be. The thing that we've got to do is stay on track. Stay focused, play hard, and when it's over, make sure there's nothing left in the clip. He did that today. But always remember this, no matter what the plan is, if you don't execute it, it's not going to work. You executed and you did an unbelievable job of that. Thank you. Mark Hauser caught up with Coach Ayers after the game. Coach, huge momentum swing at the end of the first half, and the biggest play might have been that pooch punt by Mitch Allen to pin him. Well, I, I think there was a couple things that were huge plays. Uh, you know, that the punt set up our opportunity to get to safety. We were able to kick field goals. Christian did an unbelievable job. Quite frankly, we executed well today. We, we did what we're capable of doing. We played good defense. We played uh, good offense. Uh, we had a sound kicking game for the most part, and uh, it, it was a great day. Uh, we played a really good football team in the Citadel, and uh, a lot of folks, uh, I'm sure they thought the, the dog was dead, but uh, <laughs> we came down here and, um, and and we played like we're capable of playing. Uh, we got some momentum early. We kept going and, and riding that momentum. Uh, 
A lot of takeaways on defense, which set us up really well. Both quarterbacks, I thought, did a, a really nice job of throwing the football, running the football. Uh, Michael Scott, I thought, did a great job inside at the fullback position for whatever reason that they, they didn't want to tackle the fullback, and um, we said okay. And uh, Mike's a guy that has the ability to, to create some big plays for you. I feel good about the way the kids uh, work this week. Um, the way they performed, I, I thought, was outstanding. You know as well as I do, when you're struggling, that the toughest thing to keep going is the mindset in a positive direction. And the kids, uh, bless them, they've done a great job. They've done a great job of coming out and working and uh, keeping a hand on the shovel and staying in the ditch and keep and keep digging. And uh, I'm uh, very blessed to have an opportunity to, to coach these kids. And again, our staff, I thought, did a fabulous job. Last home game next week's against Sanford, a chance to get a little more momentum. Well, Sanford uh, last year was our first opportunity that we played them as a conference opponent. Uh, they're, they're a good football team, and uh, Coach Sullivan does a great job. Uh, they created some problems with their defense last year for us, and, uh, you know, we were good enough uh, offensively to score the points that we needed, and, and then defensively we, we had a, a really good day. Uh, they've got a talented tailback. He's a game-breaker. Uh, uh, we're, we're still growing and maturing as a defense. Uh, a lot of those young kids um, are uh, still learning. And uh, we, what we've got to do is get everybody honed in on, on the game plan and execute the game plan. And, and, and we're going to have to be a good football team in all three phases. Thanks for your time, Coach. Congratulations. Coach Mike Ayers on this week's Terrier victory here in Charleston, 43-17. to Now let's hear from some of the players. The guys came out and played like we still had a lot to win for. Um, and so I'm just, I'm proud of them. I mean, we just made plays. I mean, that's, and that's what we've been lacking all year. We've been doing our assignments, but we got to step up and make plays, get turnovers. And that's something that we were good at last year and the years before is creating turnovers and getting our offense the ball. We just had a game plan and we finally executed the way we were supposed to. Everybody did their job today. And when we do our jobs, we win. I definitely didn't want to lose. I haven't been beat by these guys. And we haven't been beat as a school, but, you know, in now 11 years. So you don't want to, you don't want to be the team to break that streak. All right, let's take a look at the final game stats. Wofford 24 first downs compared to just 17 for the Citadel. A huge advantage for the Terriers when it comes to running the football. 320 yards compared to just 102 for the Bulldogs. Passing yards, the Citadel with a slight edge. Wofford 450 total yards compared to just 274 for the Citadel. Time of possession of Terriers with the slight edge. And Wofford commits just one penalty for five yards in the football game. The Citadel, meanwhile, commits just three for 30. The Citadel also turns the football over three times while Walford gives it away only once. Let's take a look at some results from around the Southern Conference. Elon knocks off Western Carolina 42 to 17, and Auburn scores early and often versus Furman. The Tigers beat Fallon 63 to 31. Appalachian State over Chattanooga 35 to 20, and Samford the mild upset, knocking off Georgia Southern 31 to 10. You're updated Southern Conference standings, and oh, we got a showdown next weekend as Elon takes on Appalachian State for the conference title. Those two sit atop the perfect 6 and 0 record in conference play. Furman comes in third with a 3 and 3 mark. Georgia Southern also 3 and 3 in conference play. Chattanooga is 3 and 4. Wofford 2 and 4. The Citadel is also 2 and 4, as is Sanford while Western Carolina checks in with a 1-6 mark in conference play. Now let's take a look at the Whites. Pine Street Exxon play of the week. It comes late in the second quarter as linebacker Gary Blunt gets through untouched and sacks Bulldog quarterback Bart Blanchard. The ball comes out, and although the Citadel recovers, it's a safety for the Terriers, and for his efforts, Gary Blunt gets our play of the week. Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. 
Papa John wants everybody to know why our pizza's better. Better and greenest, better pizza is not a slogan. It is a way of life. So he's bringing it right to him. Papa's in the house. Introducing Papa John's new Cinepie. Our fresh dough loaded with sweet cinnamon topping. Get one free when you buy a large two-topping pizza just $11.99. What do you think of the fresh dough Cinepie? A Cinepie free. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. This is where we like to take an inside look at some of the happenings off the field of play. And this week, we focus on one of the Terrier all-time great running backs and how he's still in the area helping other players to succeed at Gibbs Stadium. Let's check in with Kevious Johnson and what he's doing now. There's Kevious with room to the 40. Currently, I work for Spartanburg County School District 7 as assistant coordinator for McKinney-Vento, which is the Education Assistance Act that... Uh, provides services and assistance for families that have been displaced. I talk with the, the families of, of the students who are, who are displaced, find out their current living status, and provide those kids with uh, services such as setting up transportation so they can get to and from school, providing them with book bags, school supplies. So we promote education first uh, because that's the key, to, you know, to being a successful person. Hand off Kevious. I just let them know that you know, if I was able to go to college, uh, you know, and, and graduate from college, that you can because I'm no different than any other kid. You know, it's just about what you do and opportunities that presents itself to, to you. I'm also assistant football coach here at Spartanburg High School. I coach the JV and varsity running backs, and um, I'm also uh, assist Coach Brown in the special teams. Preparing the running backs uh, for the job that they have to do. Uh, preparing the special team players for the job that we have to do. Just thanks for all the support that I've received from the Waffle family and uh, from the coaches, uh, teammates, uh, and, and as well as classmates. Uh, I just wish Waffle the best in the upcoming games and the upcoming seasons. Uh, go Terriers. Now let's take a look at next week's opponent, brought to you by Blue Eagle Equipment, and the Terriers are back at Gibbs Stadium for the final time this season as they play host to a Sanford team that is coming off a 31-10 win over Georgia Southern this past Saturday and is now tied with Walford in the SoCon with a 2-4 and four record. Walford taking on Samford next weekend at Gibbs Stadium. Let's take a look at the particulars. It is the final home game of the season for Walford, so check it out. We'll be back here for more Inside Walford Football next week. Inside Walford Football presented by Wild Wing Cafe, Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine, Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, the AT&T Real Yellow Pages, and by Papa John's.